I invite you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. As we have been doing over the course of the summer, we've been answering questions from uh, the box. We've been in this kind of sermon series called Let's Talk About Blank. And, and uh, many of you offered questions or comments, scripture passages that, that you uh, wanted to have talked about from, uh, from the, in, in Sunday, from, in the message and stuff. So uh, we've, we've had several kind of themes that we've been working on, but one undergirding theme of identity because whenever we ask questions, whenever we look into Scripture, we do it from the foundation of our identity that is in Jesus Christ. And it's always there that we come from looking at Scripture. We are those who are in Christ. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, then you are called of God. You are God's own. And so we always start from that foundation. And, and the same is, is happening today as well. But we're also going to start moving into a theme of kind of evangelism. There were several questions that, that came into the box that, uh, that had to do with um, outreach, with witnessing. How do, you, how do you share the gospel with others? What's the best way to, to witness? What's the best way to live into God's love? Several of questions like that that, um, that kind of came in and kind of formed a little theme. And so we're going to we're kind of going to start that theme for the next couple of weeks. Um, it just so happens and it's very convenient that uh, over the next couple of weeks with having the Youth Celebration Sunday, having several missionaries being here, uh, that theme fits in really well. It actually fits perfectly because we're going to hear how God has worked in the lives of many of our, of our youth, our different youth groups, and also through them, as they were on mission trips, and also uh, working through the lives of different missionaries in different contexts and places um, to what I, I think are very different ministries, still sharing the Word of God, sharing the Gospel, and uh, seeing lives changed uh, over, uh, over the course of their, their ministries there. So that's exciting. Today is going to be somewhat of an introduction to that as we talk about uh, how we can be a living witness here and now. And, and so, uh, as, as I said, we're going to open our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 4. But before we do, uh, let's pray and ask God for His blessing in this time. Lord, speak in this time, we pray. Holy Spirit, come into this place invade our hearts. Lord, remove those things that would distract us, that would pull us away from Your Word. Be in our minds and on our hearts. In this time, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to You, our Rock and our Redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, starting at verse 4. Listen for the Word of the Lord. Jeremiah writes, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and Say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. And the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we talk about this, as I was saying just a moment ago, we have to start from the point of our identity. Who we are as the people of God. Now, the people of God have always had this, this sort of special identity 
that, that is ascent identity. And what does that mean exactly? It means that, that the people of God, while gather, they gather often. We gather each Sunday for worship. We gather for meetings and, and whatever other, you know, maybe small groups that, that may be starting and, and Sunday school or whatever. We always gather, but we don't stay gathered. We don't stay here all the time, kind of keeping the word to ourselves. Our identity is, as those who are in Christ Jesus is those who are sent out into the world. That has always been true of the people of God. We have always been sent. And so we have to remember that. We have to remember that we are not called to hoard the gospel. We are not called to keep grace inside of us, but instead are called that the very nature of our calling of those who are in Jesus Christ, those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, are those who are outward focused. You think about our mission statement here at Hopkins Community Reformed Church. It is to know Christ and to make Christ known. Yes, there is an inward movement. There is that inward movement where we want to know Christ better. We want to grow in our relationship with Him. But it is always together with that outward movement to make Christ known. And we see this time after time after time in Scripture. Paul, or, or Peter writes in, in, in his first book, uh, In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you the reason for the hope that you have. There's this inward movement and this outward movement as well. Uh, Paul writes in, in Ephesians chapter 2, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There's that inward movement. We receive grace when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and then there's an outward movement. There's always that outward movement as well. And this, this outward movement is a Holy Spirit-empowered movement. Jesus says multiple times in the book of Luke, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about the response that you will give. The Holy Spirit will speak for you. Or he says, actually, I will speak for you in wisdom so that no one can refute what it is that you say. So, not only do we have this this. Holy Spirit built faith. Faith is not our own work. Faith is a work of the Holy Spirit building up in us. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive grace. And, and this is really great, when we start the movement outward, that also is Holy Spirit empowered. That it also is a work of God in us to move outward, to spread His love, His gospel, His light to all those that we meet. And so, we're called to this. This is part of our identity. And, and I think the most obvious application of this is that we're called to share the love of God, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who don't know Jesus Christ. Right? I'm not telling you anything new here. This is, this is something that we talk about all the time. How, how can the ministries of this church, how can we as the people of God share God's love? This is always a question, always something that we're talking about and wondering about. Is, is how can we best share the gospel? Jesus says, I am sending you as the Father has sent me. This, this kind of identity of, of being sent, right? You get Moses. Moses says, well, or God calls Moses. He goes to the burning bush. He, he says, you know, I, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses is like, ah, I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. You know, we kind of have that response. Or Jeremiah here, you know, in, in the words of Jeremiah, I, I'm just a child. I don't know how to speak. How could I... How could I possibly do that? God says, don't say that. Jesus also was proclaimed, his identity proclaimed in his baptism. Said, God says, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And then he begins his ministry. And then he says at the end of his ministry, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And, and you are going to be my witnesses. You are going to preach the gospel to every pre creature. Paul says in Romans, faith comes through hearing the word. And the, word is, er, er, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. This is part of who we are, that we are called to share the gospel. 
Again, I don't think that I'm telling you anything new. This can be done through our own, through our, uh, through actually sharing the gospel, through sharing the, the word of God with people, talking about our faith, talking about what we believe and where it comes from. It can also be done through our living example. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That we live a transformed life. There, there is an element in which we are, are different. We are different than the world. We are set apart. Uh, Paul writes in, in Philippians, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or Ephesians 4 says, live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Now, there's a danger here because we often like to say, well, what does that mean? What does that, what does that mean to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received? Uh, well, it means you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this. And we box ourselves in with all these rules and stuff like that. That's not the point. The point is not to set up a law, a legalistic society where, where we have all these boundaries and, and bondage, but instead that, that we are set apart. We are set apart. That means that God is working through us that, that Christ's love is welling up inside of us and that we are fundamentally different than the world around us. We show Christ's love. Why? We love because God first loved us. From John 1. Or the fruit of the Spirit. We talked about this several weeks ago. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is all built up inside of us when we turn our face to Christ. When we are living in step with the Spirit. All of this together works so that we can be a living witness, a living example of God's love in the world. Another element of this would be idea of compassion, of mercy. Jesus, Jesus says in Matthew 25, he's talking about, uh, talking about the parable of the sheep and the goats in the end times, and, and he, says, he says to these people, you know, come, enjoy my inheritance. Why? Because whatever you did to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did to me. There's an element in which we are turning our face and, and looking to the needs of those who are marginalized, those who are oppressed, those who are put to the, the sides of society. That we are for them. That we are there for them. Or by being... A godly example. We talked about this all. We, we talk about this a lot. We need to be a godly example. That's kind of maybe the overarching, the overarching idea of of living a godly life. Paul writes, "We are Christ's ambassadors, as if God were making His appeal through us. As if God were making His appeal through us." As if God was working through us to reach others. This is what we're called to. This is what we're called to as those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Now, I don't know a lot about like, science, but I do know enough to say that the very nature of light is that if you turn on a light bulb, it is going to go as far as as it possibly can, that even when you can't see it, there are still photons that are actually moving outward. This is crazy. Right? You turn a light on in a dark room, and that light floods the entire room. That even in places where there are shadows, that light it still has an effect. Or, or salt. I don't know how many of you put salt on your food, but if you do, or if you ever had, or if you've ever eaten food that has been over-salted, you know very well that salt has an impact. Salt, by its very nature, has an impact on the food that you eat. It tastes more salty, or it amplifies the flavor, or whatever it is that salt does. It, it is, by its very nature, it, it changes the taste of the food that you eat, somehow, some way. That is what we are called to. That our very nature, our very self, our very identity is those who are ever moving outward, ever overflowing with the love of God. Interestingly, God gives us this light too. That's what, that's what uh, Paul writes in, in 2 Corinthians. God, 
for God, God who said, let light shine out of darkness, right? God who created the world said, let there be light. God made this light to shine in our hearts and to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory and that's displayed in the face of Christ. That who we are, God has given us this light when we have Christ in us, when we have the Holy Spirit in us. He gives us this light to shine outward. So how does this work? We live authentic lives. Authentic, authenticity, it's kind of a buzzword. It has been for some, several years now, actually. How do we live authentic lives? Maybe it's by being honest about the struggles that we have. And I think too often uh, in churches these days, we, uh, we tend to act like we have it all together. We are the ones that put the smile on our face and say, everything's great. Everything is so really good. You all know what I'm talking about. I know that you do. See, this is what we do, though. We, we feel like we have to put on this good show because if we put on this good show, people will, people will know and understand that Jesus Christ makes everything better and, and, and therefore they'll, they'll want to know him more. But people can smell a fake person like a mile away. Most people in this day and age, don't, they don't fall for that, that little mask that we have on. Paul says, don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed of my chains or my struggles. Instead, join me. Join me in that. What if, what if we as Christians say, yeah, no, I don't have it all together. I... Yes, I have Jesus. I am forgiven, and he loves me unconditionally, but I still screw it up. I mess it up all the time. But the beautiful thing is, is I have hope because, because my hope is not in me. My hope is in one who is better than me, who loved me even before I loved him. Hmm. Paul says too, always be prepared to give a defense. So always be prepared to answer. How is it that we're answering? How is it that we answer? Do we answer with some fakey sort of like, ah, everything's good? Or do we answer with the truth of our lives? Because the truth of our lives doesn't, doesn't actually like negate the gospel. I think we sometimes fear that. Well, I have Jesus Christ in my heart, but my life is still a, a wreck. I can't tell people that I'm a wreck because then they won't believe in Jesus. Actually, the, gospels, the, the, the Bible says differently that the grace of God increases, that the power of God increases, that all of this stuff increases because our lives are a wreck. It doesn't say to go on sinning. It doesn't say make yourself a wreck. But he says be, God still loves us and continues to love us and continues to work out our salvation inside of us. He continues to sanctify us even though we are rebellious, stubborn, boneheaded people. That's amazing. Paul writes, we have this treasure in clay jars so that people can see the all-surpassing power and glory of God. We don't have to wrap it up in, in some golden wrapping paper and put a nice bow on it and put a nice mask on ourselves to, to show God's power. That's us trying to show our own power. We have this treasure in clay jars. We look like crud. But God, God continues to work out his salvation in us. And in that, all may see all-surpassing power and grace and mercy and love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we got to share this. we got to share this with other people. we got to share this with people who don't believe. Yes, everybody can agree to that, right? Yeah, we need to share the love of God to those who don't know Jesus Christ. Amen? There's another element to this as well. We are also called to share our faith and share the gospel with those who do. We are called to be those who are sharing the good news of God to each other, to the faith community, that we may be built up in Christ. 
You know, I think that for, for as much as we like to pretend that, that we have it all good to those who don't know Jesus so that they, they would want to come to know Jesus, so much more do we do that here. And you know what I'm talking about. The, whoever it was that maybe as my family is guilty of this. My dad's a pastor, and I'm a pastor. My, my brother's a youth pastor. So, so we, we, you know, we do ministry. Like, that's just part of who we are. We are also the family who would be yelling and screaming at each other in the car on the way to church, but as soon as you open that door, you are on holy ground. And where the Bible says, where the Bible says, take off your shoes for I'm on holy ground, we think that that actually means when you step out of the car at church in the parking lot, you put a smile on your face because this is holy ground. And you know what I mean, right? We like to pretend that we have it all together. We walk into church smiling and beaming. Hey, how's it going? I haven't seen you all week. It was a really good week. I just got fired, but it was a really good week. We do that. We totally do that. You know? I don't know how many of you, uh, you know, work in construction or work outside or have to do things, but this, this past week, 90 degrees and humid like every day, if you're working outside, that's not a good week. But, but we come into church and like, yeah, yes, yeah, summer, yes, it was awesome. I had a good week. Jesus is good. God's good. And we do that. We totally do that. But what we're called to in the outward outreach, living authentic lives, being honest in our struggles, is exactly what we're called to here as well. And God bless our firefighters. Because let me tell you, they took four, three calls at least yesterday. Yesterday was awful. <laughs> it was so hot and so humid. But God bless them. Because they are awesome. We're called to authentic relationships here and now. We are called to share the gospel of Christ here in this place that we may be built up together. What does that mean? It means being honest with our struggles, being honest with what God is trying to do in our lives, being honest with where we're failing. Scripture says it over and over and over again that you may be built up in Christ, that you may be mutually encouraged. Scripture says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. Scripture says, be reconciled to each other. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. We struggle with this more here in the church sometimes than we do with our non-believing neighbors outside of the church. Scripture says, carry each other's burdens. And in doing so, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought, but rather with sober judgment. Friends, we struggle with this more sometimes in the church than we do outside. Because we know exactly how we're supposed to live towards outsiders. Yeah, well, you know, we don't want to live in such a way that it damages the message of the gospel. So, you know, we got to be nice to other people. But then when we're, we're here at church, we bite and nip and devour each other because we don't agree with each other because of past hurts or whatever it is that goes on in, in the family, right? And it stays in the family because that's what you do. You keep it in the family. But that's the way it is. We, we do that so often. But Scripture says, no. In the same way that you are called to witness and share the gospel with those outside the church, so too are we called to do that here and so much more here so that we can be built up and so that those fruits and all that, that we're called to live on the outside may be built up here and overflow out of these walls into the community. So how are we doing on that? That might feel a little bit more convicting. Now remember, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We come back to that verse all the time because this is not condemnation. Conviction is the Spirit raising stuff up in us to say, ah, oh, maybe I got a little bit of work to do yet. Maybe God's got some more work to do. He's not finished with me yet. Praise God for that. I mean, 
I don't know. I know where I am, and I'm glad that he's not finished with me yet. I don't know about y'all, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm so glad that he who began a good work in me will see it through to completion. He who began a good work in you will see it through to completion on the day of Christ. So, friends, we have some work to do. We have some work to do internally and externally. Because we have a story to tell. And our story is found in God's story. What God has been doing in our lives and through our lives so that we can see the church built up and we can see many, many, many people come to Christ and know Christ because of our love. What does that, that old hymn say? They'll know we are Christians by our love. I woke up this morning. This is the funniest thing. I, God is good like this, right? So I woke up this morning, and you know, I, I like hymns. Don't, don't get me wrong here. Don't get me wrong. I, I like hymns, but if I were to choose music to listen to on a daily basis, it wouldn't be hymns. It just wouldn't. But I woke up this morning, and I, was, I just couldn't get this song out of my head. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his love, right? And it, I couldn't get out of my head. I'm like, what a perfect song to go right here, right now. I love to tell the story. Do we? Do we? Do we love to tell the story of Jesus? Do we love to tell what God is doing in our lives? Do we love to share that here and now? How God is working through a group of people to help someone who, who can't finish a project, take care of it, and finish it for him. Praise God for that. To the story of those in this church who have come around different families at different times in need to, to provide whatever it is that they need. Money, food, whatever. To tell about how God continues to bless this community with different ministries and leaders that are stepping up to do more and more things around here so that more and more people can be ministered to so that God's name can be glorified, that we could be built up and that we can flow out of this place to impact the community of Hopkins. The community of Hopkins who desperately needs it. Don't, don't kid yourselves, okay? In a recent survey, 2016 survey, 11% of the people said that their faith, in this area, in the West Michigan area, said that their faith was important to them. 11%. Friends, we need to be about this business. We need to recognize our sent identity because there is a world who desperately needs it. We need to be built up. We need to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit through sharing God's great love with each other here that that fruit may grow, that this could be a garden to which a hungry people outside can come. Friends, we need this so desperately. So don't be afraid of your story. Don't be afraid of what God is doing in your life. To tell it, you're not boasting in yourselves. You're not bragging. What does Paul say? If I want to boast, I will boast in the Lord. Not in my own achievements. Let's not be afraid of our stories. Let's not be afraid of what God is doing in our lives. That we can be built up together and together can be a light to the world, the salt of the earth. That we together, as we are sent from this place week in and week out to go to the different places that God calls us can be the very light that this world needs. May it be so for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Steve. Hmm? Yep. Amen. God used a group of guys. God used a group of guys to finish a project that would not have been finished for an injured brother on a 95 degree day. Group of people. 
Thank you. My apologies <laughs> to all the women that I just offended. <laughs> But these are the things, these are the things that God calls us to. These are the things that God calls us to share. I wonder, I, I wonder what thing that you're thinking of right now that you could share with somebody over a cup of coffee, that we could together hear what God is doing in this community during the fellowship time. I wonder. I wonder how much we could be built up and how much we could celebrate together what God is doing. In just a moment here. I wonder. Let's pray. God, you are great. And your mercy and grace are beyond our comprehension. And we thank you We thank you that you have worked through us and continue to work through us. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to want to share that. To share that with each other. To share that with a world that is stumbling about in darkness. God, we ask that you you would work in this place. That you would build us up. Holy Spirit, speak through us. Move in our hearts that we may be your light, that we may be the salt of the earth, Lord, that we would always be ready to give a defense, to be your ambassadors, and that through us the world would come to know you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.